everyone. Welcome, you guys. Welcome to take five. Um, we could probably talk about a couple more testimonies yeah. about from Sunday night. I know we mentioned a couple on Monday night, but Sunday night we had our miracle service at church and lots of testimonies. A lot mm -hmm. of people and what we're talking about today, a lot of people were set free from. So, hey, mm -hmm. Michelle. Um, so there was a time of prayer for people who are tormented by thoughts of the enemy and by strongholds. Hey, Doyle. Um, and we are hearing testimonies throughout this week, and I know that more are probably coming, of people that were just constantly, even all their lives or for the past several years, their thoughts have been tormented over and over. Hey, Jess. Hey, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. Tormented by um, the enemy accusations and um, shame and doubt and fear and worry and um, just, you know, constant battering of their mind, mm -hmm. suspicion and um, negative thoughts, negative, super negative thoughts, like destructive thoughts mm -hmm. towards themselves. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit just mm -hmm. broke through and Jesus completely broke those strongholds. And from one night to the next day, they were in a moment completely set free and are not struggling with any of those um, thoughts anymore. And so we wanted yeah. to help you guys because we also have been through um, attacks of the enemy and the spirit realm is very real. Mm -hmm. We've been through attacks of the enemy that we need to recognize and all of us need to recognize that um, when these thoughts come, not to allow them to continue because that's how strongholds are built. Then as long as we let him have his way for a short time, he's going to take over, <laughs> you know, like he tries to take over your brain. Um, but if you can recognize the words of the enemy in the battlefield of your mind and there are those tormenting thoughts going over and over if you can recognize it you can be set free from it mm -hmm. and so we want to help you with that yes yeah, and i think that um i think that uh um we need again a, a someone way more powerful than us um uh, to do it, you know, their Bible says, you know, unless you bind the strong man, you can't enter the house. So we just realize that we need mm -hmm. a powerful um, thing that God can do for us. And, um, you know, there were just simple things that happened. Obviously, we prayed for people, yeah. simple things, simple touches, mm -hmm. you know, speaking the truth over them. And a lot of healing. A lot of healing. Mm -hmm. And, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of things that we don't even know about because mm -hmm. sometimes people just, they... They get touched by God, and they probably want to see if it's real. Is this thing, is this thing is right? Is it going to stick? Yeah. Um, and uh, that's okay, because, you know, we, we just want God to uh, get the glory. We want Jesus to get the glory, and so he did. He did he some amazing mm -hmm. things. And, um, yeah. And so, but you, we also, you know, uh, we also know that when you go into that spiritual realm, well, you're going to get some pushback. Um, anytime you're doing anything for Jesus and you're especially getting people free, yeah. um, then you know that he doesn't like it. The enemy doesn't right. like it. And so he will, he, he'll, he'll bring pushback. He'll try mm -hmm. to, and what he does, he brings, um, he's the accuser of the bre brethren. He, he, he brings accusations. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, you, you, so really uh, this is about even knowing his voice a little bit. Um, really, the, the biggest thing is knowing God's voice because when you know God's voice, um, it, it'll silence that, that other voice. So the right. more that you know God's voice, that's really the, the key to mm -hmm. it is knowing knowing how God speaks, knowing what he says about us. You'll immediately um, know the difference. <laughs> yes. You'll it know is, the it, difference. It is very, uh, very distinctive yes. um, when, when you hear God and, and knowing um, even how the enemy speaks too, which is, yeah. which is key because the Bible says you need to, we need to know his schemes. We need mm -hmm. to know how, know his strategies. Yeah. Um, so that he just can't sneak up on us every single time. Yeah. So he, he, you know, I don't know if you, you're, you're sick and tired of being bullied by the enemy. I don't know if you're tired of listening to those accusations morning, noon, and night. Yeah. But um, it's about time we learn how he speaks and how to silence the enemy. Um, how to <laughs> silence the enemy. I want, first want to start with this foundational truth about the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's found in Colossians 2.15. When it's Jesus, really about Jesus too. Yeah, yeah. when Jesus um, rose again, um, 
and, and finally just defeated the enemy, took all of our sins. It says in Colossians 2.15, having disarmed, this is Jesus, principalities and powers, Jesus made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Yeah. So he literally, that, that word um, disarm means he stripped. He stripped Satan um, and, and his demons uh, completely of their of their um their 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 powers their Their, authority their their, their their authority Mm -hmm. right so um so you just need to know that 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 work has been done by jesus Mm -hmm. he's disarmed and so what happens is is he comes and he he looks he makes himself look so much bigger Mm -hmm. than he actually is and that is the deception that that, Mm -hmm. that's the lie we that we fall into yeah, because he speaks things that sound real and they sound right and they may have a little element of truth to them, but, or an element of fact, I guess, yeah. to them, but they are not the truth because when you're in Christ, there is no condemnation for you in Christ Jesus and there is no mm-hmm. accusation that can stand. And so the enemy will come with his accusations and shame and bitterness and anger and all of that. And it is sometimes hard to get out of it because you're like, well, I did do that or I, yeah. my, I am like that or whatever. Um, but instead of just believing his lies, you have to recognize that it's his voice and go like, nope, there's, he's been disarmed. He's yes. been uh, stripped of his weapons. Right. And then if you don't believe him, if you don't believe the lies and, and you have the power to not believe him, <laughs> then he has no authority over you. He has you no know, power over you. Yeah, you know, and, and, and as you're saying that, you know, that we'll, we'll, might, we, we could talk about this in a moment, how to defeat the enemy, but yeah. it says um, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That's but it. I want to tell you about the blood of the lamb, and that is mm. the blood covers your greatest victories mm-hmm. and your worst failures. Let me tell you right now, you, the blood of Jesus covers your greatest victories. Mm-hmm. We all love it when we have victory. Well, the blood's covering it. That's why we can, we can give credit to Jesus, yes. but he also covers your greatest failures. You need to know that. Some people some people think, oh God, you're with me in my victory. This has been great. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden when they fail, the, then they're focused on the failure and they think the blood doesn't cover that failure. And then they, they fall mm-hmm. to, the, to the enemy's um, mm-hmm. uh, um, schemes. But that word disarm, he disarmed principalities, means it's a military term meaning to remove defensive mm-hmm. and offensive capability. Mm-hmm. So he moved both the defensive capability of, of the enemy Mm-hmm. And his offensive capability. In other words, what I'm seeing here is that he's a sitting duck. So right. Satan actually is mm-hmm. is he is out in the open, mm-hmm. where he makes us think right. that we're the that's ones it. we're the ones vulnerable and out in the open. Right. That's how he that's how he uh, right. deceives us. So it's up to you to believe in the power of Jesus and what He's already done for you to defeat the enemy and strip him of his weapons and take away the power of his words. Um, and believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. What he has already done for, me, for you is much more powerful than what the enemy is saying. What the enemy is saying is he's just pretending. Right. He's just pretending that he's stronger than Jesus. He's just pretending that he has weapons that can defeat you. He's just pretending that he can steal, mm-hmm. pull, and destroy from you. He, he can't because you are hidden in Christ. That's right. And far, far greater is he living in you than he who is in the world coming against you. So those are the things you have to remember when right. those thoughts are, are running around in your mind. Uh, yeah. The enemy is defenseless, but only if you believe in what <clears throat> Jesus has done for you. <laughs> right. So I love this verse. It says, so the great dragon was cast out. That, that's Satan. By the way, mm-hmm. Satan isn't necessarily his name. It's more, it's more of a job description because it, it, Satan means to, um, to block. It means to, um, his word, his name means to... Uh, to cause you know stumbling blocks and, mm-hmm. and to block he he really tries to um, hinder that's what he does that's yeah. what his name means so his job is he wants to stop believers and Christians mm-hmm. from knowing that they have authority and power um, that Jesus has given them o- o- over him right, right. so mm-hmm. so so the great dragon was cast out that was Satan the serpent of old called the devil and Satan mm-hmm. who deceives the whole world he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud, loud voice saying in heaven, now, this is awesome, now salvation and strength mm-hmm. and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. 
for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast down. Yeah. And they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death. Mm. And there he is. There's the voice. Number one, you got to understand this, is that the, the voice of the enemy is always accusatory. He's yes. always accusing. Whenever, mm -hmm. you, whenever you accuse, you, we accuse ourselves. Mm -hmm. This is what I was thinking. Yeah, but, but he saying. always accuses. That's, mm -hmm. what he, that's how he speaks with, an, yeah. with accusations. And remember who the devil is. Jesus said it. He's a liar and he's the father of lies. All he can speak is lies. So even though there's an element of fact to it, it is not the truth. It is still a lie. You know how we yeah. always say, like, fear is a liar. That's true. The spirit of fear is a liar. If you are worried about something in mm -hmm. the future that has not happened or worried about something unknown, it hasn't happened, it is a lie from the right. enemy that that thing is going to happen or that you're, uh, you need to be afraid of that happening. Yes. Because the truth is you have life in Jesus. You're always you're going to win no matter what. <laughs> you know, no matter right. what happens, you already have victory. Um, in Jesus. So uh, you can be tormented and let those thoughts continue and let that fear uh, torment you or you can put a stop to it and that's what we want to teach you well, guys. Well let me say this too is in, in, but how close he the enemy is will determine how loud he is. Mm. So how if close let him in. Yeah, if, if, how close he is will determine how loud he is. Yeah. So again if, if God is close mm. right if his voice is speaking, if you're, you know, that's why the Bible's so important. Ooh, that's why worship music, that's, that's why getting around the right people that will encourage you. Mm -hmm. when, when God is close, mm -hmm. then you're hidden in him and the voice of the enemy. Mm -hmm. can't, why are you smiling? Because I'm, <laughs> no. because I'm picturing no. something. Good. What's your picture? Oh, <laughs> I thought you I wanted to know. keep saying no, what I you're saying. No. Uh, I'm saying, or I'm thinking of how we can draw near to him like our father and just sit on his lap. And when we're that close, we don't have to hear him loudly. We can hear him whisper. Because he, when he's that close, we hear him whisper in our ear. You know, really, he lives in us. So he really is close. It's just up to you to believe that. Right. And then to listen for the whispers of God, the still small voice that speaks so loudly if you're willing to hear. If you just come near to him and go like, what do you want to whisper to me? The secrets of God you will hear very loud and clear. And the enemy's voice will be completely silenced. As long yes. as you're just close to Jesus. But yes. if you let the enemy in to your soul and you start believing what he's saying, right. that voice gets louder and louder too. Yeah, you know, right. and right. So I mean, here, here's, I believe this is proper protocol when dealing with the enemy. Mm. When the voice starts to pop up, when you when you see demonic activity, whatever whatever's happening, you recognize this is mm. not the voice of God. Right. And it's, it's the voice of the enemy. So Ze Zechariah 3, 1 through 2 says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and mm -hmm. Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Remember, Satan wants to get close to oppose. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Mm -hmm. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? So really what he's saying here is, is whenever you go into battle, um, when you go into battle against the enemy, I think it's very important to even say this phrase, the Lord rebuke you. And I know you can say, I rebuke you, but I think, I think um, this is better because it, it shows us who we're relying on. Right. And sometimes the you can go to battle. Yeah, you can go to battle just thinking, man, I'm, mm -hmm. I have this authority. And sometimes that can be arrogance. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it. Sometimes it's right and bold. But I'll tell mm -hmm. you something. I think when you go into battle, do what do it, uh, is done here. It says, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Mm -hmm. The Lord rebuke you. The Bible says even this is that the angels even don't say, uh, d almost like they don't say disrespectful things towards the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, they just know that, hey, they just say the Lord rebuke you. Yeah. The Lord, it, it puts our trust in him. Mm -hmm. It makes us understand that God is with us when we go into battle. So right. we say the Lord rebuke you, mm -hmm. Satan. The Lord rebuke you. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's a right and proper protocol dealing with mm -hmm. the enemy. Yeah. The, angel, the angel didn't say it. God said it. Right. God said it. Angel so, of the Lord standing in the right hand, and the Lord said to Satan, the right. Lord rebuke you, Satan. Right. So that kind of shows me, use the word of God. When you're rebuking yes. the enemy, use God's word. It's so much more powerful than yeah. my words or your words, mm -hmm. you know, like we can say some good things that are truth or whatever, but the word of God 
silences the enemy every single time. The spirit of God lives in the word and the mm -hmm. enemy hates it. He hates the word of God. Whenever I've dealt with something spiritual and I know that's a spiritual attack, mm -hmm. I get out the word of God and I can, you can open it to almost anywhere. Yeah, right. I like to open it to the Psalms or Isaiah and begin to just speak it out loud because the devil does not, even yes. though the battlefield is in your mind, mm -hmm. the devil doesn't hear your thoughts. He can speak things into your ear and into your soul and then uh, try to get a foothold there, but he's not hearing your thoughts. So yeah. you speak the word out loud and he will hear it and he will run from you. Yes, because the word is a sword. And, um, you know, that, that makes sense because Jesus is the word. So yes. again, you're talking about the Lord here. Again, Jesus is the, the word. Of Jesus. The word is sharp, like it is a sword. Yes. So it makes sense that 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 the, that the enemy would want to keep us from the mm -hmm. word of God, keep us even memorizing it and having it as a weapon yeah. very easily to, uh, taken out in times when we say, mm -hmm. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and of sound mind. Yep. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. I mean, mm -hmm. these, are, these are things that you remember in life so that you can easily, when you fall into those, mm -hmm. those battles, you can pull that sword out and begin to begin to cut away. And again, you cannot, you cannot defeat a spirit mm -hmm. with anything in the natural. You yeah. defeat the spirit, a, an evil spirit, with, the, with another spiritual weapon, right? right? That's how you do that. Yeah. So this is really powerful right here, this next thing that um, Dan is going to say. But I'm going to set it up with just a little story of something happened to me the other day where I I didn't recognize it right away as an attack of the enemy mm -hmm. in my mind. Uh, in the middle of the night, and this happens a lot, in the middle of the night when you like the worries, you wake up and all of a sudden worries and fears and things are running through your mind. Well, worries and fears were running through my mind and suspicion and, um, you know, defensiveness and shame really, you know, like how I felt about myself and uh, worthlessness, things like that. And um, I, I tried to come against it and I prayed and that kind of thing, but I needed the next day, I needed to spend time with the Lord and listen to what he had to say. I had to, I couldn't defeat it just by praying and just by my own, like trying to change my thoughts by myself. Mm -hmm. I needed to receive what God was saying to me and about me. So I spent some time with my journal and praying, um, like reading the word of God, but journaling what God was saying to me, writing mm -hmm. down. And that's really a way that I do it. But um, so Dan was just going to say, like, what are you focusing on? What kind of enemies are you facing? You want to yeah, say that? no, that's good. Right. Um, are you facing an enemy of debt, enemy mm -hmm. of fear, enemy of lack, troubled relationship? Um, God wants to silence those things that come against you. So instead of focusing on what is coming against you, focus on the one who is for you. And here's the verse which is which 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 you can cling to. Yes. Romans eight thirty one. Mm -hmm. What should we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, mm -hmm. who can be yes. against us? So one of the enemy's tactics is to make you believe that God's not for you. Right. Even when you made a mistake, even when you failed, he wants to tell you, oh, God's discarding you. He's mm -hmm. not going to help you. He's not going to be with you. But that's not what happens. Right. Because of the blood of Jesus, all you have to do is go, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, help me. And and he and you just he's always been there. You just mm -hmm. recognize that that's who you depend on and the enemy can't touch you so that Jesus mm -hmm. stands as your, um, he stands your defense attorney. Yes. When, when, when the accuser comes and say, ha, see, they did it. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, what? What are you talking about? They're totally pure and innocent. He says, well, I saw them. I heard them say this or mm -hmm. they got mad or they got angry. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus says, well, well, um, he turns to the father and says, father, um, uh, that that's taken care of. I've got that. Um, mm -hmm. I took that. Uh, I took that. I took that uh, on myself two thousand years ago. That's what he does in the courtroom. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So the end of that story for me was once I had what God had to say. Once I knew that God was for me. Yeah. And I had heard His voice. I woke up in the middle of the night again last night, and I almost like I recognized the peace that I felt. Mm -hmm. I didn't have those same thoughts running through my mind about myself or anybody else. And I um, almost tried to think about it again, the thing that I had been worried about. I tried to think about it, but those thoughts would not even come. Like I had so much peace, I couldn't even think, I couldn't even hear that voice of the enemy any longer. Mm -hmm. So he, it really does work to receive the voice of God, 
will silence the voice of the enemy. And like you said, Mark, that fear blocks the peace of God, but God's love will open up the peace of God for you. Like yeah. receiving his love and receiving, hearing his mm -hmm. voice for you and how he's overcome for you will uh, pour peace into your soul. <laughs> it's like that song that um, Casting Crown sings, the voice of truth tells mm -hmm. me a different story. Mm -hmm. The voice of truth. Mm-hmm shows Just me the way it. I think I can't remember but it's the voice of mm -hmm. truth and so you're, we're always when you grab the truth it's a truth that sets us free yeah. and the truth is God is for you he's mm -hmm. always for you he's not against you so that we can rejoice that God just doesn't discard us he doesn't he doesn't um leave us unprotected we are always protected in him mm -hmm. but we have to have the right perspective like we need to see that um Remember, the enemy wants to paint a picture. So let's say you go through a troubled time. Let's say your marriage is struggling right now. And every day you're waking up and you're struggling and you, you can't even, you're, you're not getting the right perspective. You don't see hope in your marriage. And, and all of a sudden the enemy's trying to just paint a picture of, oh, you know what? It's not going to go well. This thing is going to, this thing is going to uh, crumble. Mm -hmm. um, blah, 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 this and that. And if you receive it, Okay, if you get that perspective, you'll wake up discouraged and hopeless. Yeah. So remember, the enemy is always trying to use words to paint a picture mm -hmm. of something negative and fearful for the future. Right. God wants to paint a picture of the truth Hope about who and, he is mm -hmm. and, and really who is for you. Yeah. Hope and victory and a good future. That's the picture God wants to paint for you. So I love this, this scripture. In, um, it's, it's, about, it's about Elisha and... Um, in a, in a servant, and so what happened was uh, they were they were surrounded. The, uh, Israel's enemy came to capture Elisha, and so uh, I think I think he was coming out of his cave, and the enemy sent a multitude of soldiers and horses, literally their their way. And the servant, his servant, I think Gehazi, woke up and saw the army and was afraid. Like this is actually happening. There's horses and chariots, and they're coming to kill Elisha. But this is what Elisha said. Mm. So he answered in mm -hmm. 2 Kings 6, 16 and 17. He says, so he answered, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Mm -hmm. And Elisha prayed mm. and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes of his servant that he may see. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire from God. God's army showed up mm -hmm. all around Elisha. So that is so huge is to pray. Yeah. Is to pray. Obviously believe, like see something different yes. that God already says about us. So whenever we counsel uh, either couples or individually, we counsel somebody um, and minister to them, we usually end with praying to you know get out of their soul whatever it is they're struggling mm -hmm. with and those thoughts that they're struggling with and just remove you know ask Jesus to remove those things and forgive them but uh, then we end it with Holy Spirit open their eyes just exactly like what Elisha said open their eyes that they could see yeah. what's really going on they can see themselves through your eyes they can see themselves in the future lord what you have planned for them right. they could see the uh the impact that they're making or that you're making in their life and so right. it's different every single time but if you ask the lord to open your eyes god is going to show you what's really happening not what the enemy has been saying to you right. but who you really are who God really is, and uh, what he has planned for your future. So maybe at the end we can pray that. Well, uh, actually, yeah, quick. I was going to have you pray okay. that over to open up our eyes to see to see what uh, Gehazi saw. And, you know, mm -hmm. Elisha saw it by faith, and then he said, hey, I'm going to pray for my servant. It's really good that he sees it. And he prayed. Uh, the servant opened his eyes, and boom, God's army mm -hmm. was all around. Yeah. And those are the pictures we need to see that God is for us. And we need to see the picture of the enemy out in the open, mm -hmm. really running. The Bible says if you submit to God, resist the devil, he flees. There's another, there's another picture. I think a lot of times we just we, we don't realize that spiritual warfare is real. Yep. It's a serious battle. It's a vicious battle. And so and a lot of times we, 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 look, we're, we might be arguing or fighting with a person, and we don't remember that we don't war against flesh and blood, yep. but against principalities, powers, yes. spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We, we mm. actually are fighting again. And so what do we do? This, this we do. We engage in a natural battle with someone, an argument. Yeah. We start worrying and we forget that God is saying, no, 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 mm -hmm. no, no, no. 
I want you Mm -hmm. to right now start slinging the word. I want you to take out your sword and start battling Mm -hmm. the enemy right now. I Mm -hmm. want you to pray. I want you to to worship. I want you to do those things. Those are the things we normally don't do up front. Normally we're like, (gasps) it's going to, everything's going to, you're panicking. Mm -hmm. You're looking, you see the bills are coming in Mm -hmm. and then we, we do something in the natural and, but God's saying, no, 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 hold on a second. Let me show you what I see. What's God really say what's happening. really yes, what's really yeah. happening. So uh, this is so important. Like Dan mentioned earlier, in marriages, really any relationships, but you have to recognize that you are not fighting with the person. You are not wrestling with flesh and blood. <clears throat> and recognizing that is the first step to getting freedom from the thoughts and the defensiveness that mm-hmm. happens. Um, so like a week ago or something, uh, something happened. Um, where I took something that somebody did or said as um, shame towards myself. And I start started having thoughts of worthlessness and um, a lesser value and I'm not as important and I you know I'm not as loved or different things like that. like, in um, being afraid of what people thought of me and all of that. So but these are tormenting thoughts of the enemy. So instead of, Though, God gave me the grace to be able to recognize that I'm fighting not with flesh and blood, but wrestling an enemy that is lying to me. So that I could go, what's happening in me? Why why do I feel upset? Instead of like uh, pointing fingers and going, they should have done this instead, or they should say this instead, or, right. you know, they should have, um, you know, even if that's true, it may be true, somebody could do something different or say something different and whatever, but it's not really their fault that you feel the way you feel and that you're having the thoughts you're having. It's I, it was my responsibility to recognize the enemy was taking a situation and he was putting shame Mm -hmm. and condemnation on me and, uh, fear and, and worry and all that. So I had to, I had to take that by the horns and Mm -hmm. I had to go, okay, Lord, forgive me for, uh, indulging in that. And I'm not going to listen to the voice of the enemy, Lord. What do you say about me? So yeah, that's really it takes good. a process, but recognizing that it's the enemy is super helpful, especially in marriage, you guys. So let me, let me give you a key right now, and then we're going to pray for it. This is, I think this is so powerful. Mm. The enemy, okay, let's think about this. You, you, we have an enemy um, that really knows us. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said before, he's been doing this for thousands of years. We've only been doing this for uh, however long we've been a Christian you know, learning his strategies, but he, he learns us is what he does. He, he, they watch us. Mm-hmm. And so we are creatures of habit. And, and when you go into battle, if, if he knows how you're going to react mm-hmm. and you know, like you, let's say that every time something stressful comes, he says, Oh, I know so-and-so is going to do that. And I'm just going to watch it happen. It's going to unfold. I know that this person's not going to go to God or not going to do this. They're actually going to call so-and-so and gossip, or they're going to mm-hmm. call, they're going to run, uh, you know, to this place, or they're gonna they're gonna do that thing. Mm-hmm. Well, let me just say this to you: if he if this is something we do over and over again, mm-hmm. do something that he's not expecting. Do something that the enemy's not expecting. Mm-hmm. So if he expects you to do something that you normally do, just say no. Instead, mm-hmm. pray in the spirit. Yeah. Instead, preach a message. Mm-hmm. Sending her like do the opposite. Like if mm-hmm. you if you feel like I'm gonna freak out, I'm, I can't do this. All of a sudden mm-hmm. now. Man, start dance, start put a worship song on. Mm-hmm. Like what I'm saying is, he doesn't expect you to do it. Right. So if you catch him by surprise, mm-hmm. you will defeat him, and he'll be yeah. like, "Whoa, I didn't not see that coming." Do the opposite of what you really want to do, do in yes, that yeah, moment we, of what your right. flesh wants we to wanna do. We want to run, and we want to um, yell at you know, somebody. Like, like, like if if you listen, if you are a warrior, be a worshiper. It's simple as that. Yes. If you worry. Again, start singing, start doing, do something. What it's going to do is it's going to catch your enemy by surprise. Yes. Remember, he's the one out in the open. He's the one vulnerable, not you. Yes. He's the one that 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 is that is an easy target, right? He, don't you don't have to be an easy target. No. He's the one that's an easy target. So turn it back. He's defeated already. Yes. Turn it back on him. Mm-hmm. Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will right. flee. Mm-hmm. from you say there's conflict happening and like in a marriage or, or whatever and uh 
the, the word says a gentle answer turns away wrath instead of like yelling back at the person or getting defensive or whatever. Like maybe you need a few minutes to calm down and get some perspective. That's right. fine. Go to mm-hmm. another room and pray and go yeah. like, okay, what's going on in me? Why do I, right. why am I feeling this way or these thoughts? But, yeah. um, then when you do come together, like a gentle answer, you know, yeah. I'm sorry that I responded that way. I'm sorry I got defensive. I'm, I've been feeling really attacked by the enemy in these different areas or whatever, whatever yeah. it is. But a gentle answer turns away wrath. So do what the enemy does not expect and does not want you to do because he's just trying to, like, pull you in. He's using bait to, to push your buttons, I guess, you know. And let me say this to you. You are not going to do that. Never so. get down on yourself. For <laughs> not learning. today, Satan. That's right. <laughs> Never get down on yourself. When you're learning spiritual battle, nobody's the best at it. Jesus is the best. We rely on him. But just know that like, I'm still learning how to do this. Like, like we, but you just have to take a step. Like, like, you know, you have weapons, like find one verse, you know, find one verse that means a lot to you that you know that the enemy has been attacked. If he's attacking with fear, then man, Lord, you've not given me a spirit of fear. What would you give me? Mm -hmm. Power. Love and a sound mind. I mean, you say that over and over again until that enemy right. is defeated. Because again, you're 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 we, you're wielding a sword, mm. a sword of the spirit against him, and you mm-hmm. cannot defeat a wicked spiritual enemy with anything in the natural. Right. It has to be a spirit against spirit, right? right? Spirit against mm-hmm. spirit. Yeah. So remember, he is the one vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You are the one that has all of the weapons from God. He's been stripped of his powers right. defensively and mm-hmm. offensively. You have everything you need to to Mm -hmm. watch him run, Mm -hmm. okay? But it's up to us Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. just simply, like I said, do something that he, your enemy, is not expecting. Yeah. Just even tonight. Like, just do something. Turn the TV off. Mm -hmm. You can watch it later. Turn it off for 10 minutes. Yeah. Pray. Right. Pray, like, Mm -hmm. get on your knees. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sling the word, whatever it is. Yeah. Tell God that he is master of your home and he is master of your mind instead of, he's the mastermind, (laughs) instead of Satan or those thoughts Mm -hmm. or the things that have been happening. Um, There is huge power Mm -hmm. in surrender to the Holy Spirit. That it seems like a thing that feels to the world like weakness or it feels to your flesh like weakness when you have to surrender, uh, when you have to yield instead of taking charge or making something happen or uh, right. defending yourself or, or yelling at the person or going and making, you know, mm-hmm. fixing something or whatever, fixing the problem. Instead, stop and go, I yield to you, Holy Spirit. You are the master of my life. Yeah. Like in this situation, you are king and you are Lord. In my home where there has been conflict or there has been um, chaos, Lord, your peace reigns here. I yield to you. I yield to your peace. So yielding to yeah. him and letting him be the master of right. your thoughts and of your home and of mm-hmm. the situation you're facing is so powerful. Because again, like we started out with, Jesus has already defeated yeah. the enemy, but it's up to you to yield to what Jesus has done for you. So Emily's going to pray in a moment. I want to give you this little phrase to remember. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Let me say it again. If you know the enemy mm-hmm. and know yourself, and really what we're saying is you know mm-hmm. you know who you are in Christ. Like yes. when you know yourself, you know that you're a child of God. You know you're a son and yes. daughter of God. You know that what Jesus did for you is you just understand it in your heart. Mm-hmm. You know who you are. That's what it means. But if yeah. you know your enemy, know yourself in the Lord, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you'll also suffer defeat. So there's going to be up and down battles when you only know when you know your enemy, but not yourself. And if you if you don't know yourself or the enemy, you'll succumb in every battle. What I'm mm. saying is here, listen, just just know your you you don't have to spend a ton of time getting to know him. We're just giving you a few things about him. Mm-hmm. But really, what Emily's saying is just know God. God is so much bigger. Mm-hmm. Whatever you're going through right now, so I'm going to say when Emily prays, I believe that God's going to open up your eyes to the answer to a troubled marriage to a financial Mm -hmm. difficulty. A troubled mind. Troubled mind. Mm -hmm. He's going to open up the answer to you. He's going to show you how much Mm -hmm. bigger God is and the team that God is sending around you, the mighty Mm -hmm. angels 
all the things mm-hmm. he has for you. So, Emily, yeah. go ahead and mm-hmm. pray for them, and uh, yes. we will end. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So, you guys, pray with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and Holy Spirit, we welcome you mm-hmm. here. We welcome your voice. We want to hear what you have to say. Lord, and for those that are listening that do um, over and over that are tormented by the voice of Mm -hmm. the enemy, we just bind that voice right now. We bind that, um, those spirits from speaking and Lord, we close their ears and our ears to the voice of the enemy, Lord, and we open our ears and our eyes to hear and see only Jesus. Lord, we want to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. We want to see what you are doing, Lord. We don't want to see what fear says it wants us to see right. in the future. We want to see the future you have planned for us, Lord. It's a future full of hope. Mm-hmm. It's a good future, Lord, that's filled with your presence. And so we just welcome you right now into our thoughts and our hearts and our souls. Mm-hmm. And the Holy Spirit, open the eyes of those who are yes. listening and watching, Lord. Open their spiritual eyes, Lord. Open their spiritual ears to hear your voice, and to see what you have planned for them, Mm -hmm. Lord. Help them to see the opposite of what the enemy has been speaking, Lord. Mm -hmm. Let them see what you're doing in their situation. And let them see who they are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we are trusting you that as you speak, Lord, you're going to silence the voice of the enemy completely and do away with all of those tormenting thoughts and tactics of the enemy. Right. Father, we, we love you. We yield to you. Mm-hmm. We thank you, Lord. Fill us with peace. Yes. Fill us first with your love, Lord. That goes way beyond our understanding. Fill mm-hmm. us with your love, Lord, and overflow with peace. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you guys. We're actually going to continue this. So yeah. um, it'll be this, what, Monday? Yeah, Monday, mm-hmm. right. It's Friday. I forgot. So Monday you guys, be, if you're just always. jumping on now, I see a couple of you just start just joining us. Um, please watch the whole thing from the beginning. It's very powerful and very um, impactful truth. Yeah. Hey, you guys. Uh, and so Angie, Karen, and Tracy. Hey. So if you watch from the beginning and then that last part where I prayed that God would open your ears and eyes, I would love to hear in the comments what it is that the Lord showed you because and you know how God opened the eyes of Gehazi to see all of the the armies of God that were for him uh, far more than anybody coming against him. We want right. you to see that for yourself. Yeah. And I know that God's going to show you something. And I just want to say before we leave is that share this with, with as many people as you can yes. because Please share it. You, you know, we, we just need to be on the offensive with the enemy. We need to learn how to do this. Many people need to be set free the enemies will press them, so mm-hmm. share it, you guys. We love you. Share have an it. awesome, We're doing awesome, away with awesome, shame. That's right, awesome. We're doing away we with fear. We love you guys. Yeah, have a great <laughs> day. We'll see you guys, love you guys. Uh, Monday.